cross-site scripting attacks or XSS attacks can actually be a massive problem. Now, at their worst, this will allow an attacker to forward a user to another page, effectively stealing any kind of information about their current session. So for example, cookies. As you may know, using a cookie, you can authenticate a user. You may have a remember token, which allows a user to be remembered. If anyone gets hold of that value, they're able to log in as another user effectively. Now this could be anything else. In this case, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be focusing on setting a cookie. We're actually going to demonstrate stealing a cookie via an XSS attack. Now, first of all, we need to understand what an XSS attack is, or rather how we can protect against it before we actually demonstrate this. So what we're gonna be doing is, inside of a database here, I have two users within a users table. And these have just kind of normal fields you'd expect. So email, password, username. And what we're gonna be doing is, we're going to be inserting manually some data into this bio column. Now this would normally be something like about the user, but what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be pasting or putting JavaScript within here. And then we're gonna be seeing that run on the page unless we protect against it. So the first thing then is to actually connect to our database. I have a PDO instance here connected to the host that I'm working with in the database name. And what we're going to be doing is pulling a specific user through here and uh, displaying some information about them. So the way I want to do this then is just simply saying username equals and then the name of the user here, something that you'd normally have uh, on some kind of profile page. So if we just check that that value is set, so username. Now if it's not set, I just want to kill the page. So I'll check that for a false value. So now we're gonna do a quick query to grab the, these details. So we're gonna select everything from the users table where the username equals. And I'm using a prepared statement here and I have a placeholder just in here. And I'm gonna execute this. And I'm gonna pass in that username. This is to prevent against SQL injection. So there we go. So now what we can do is we can grab those user details. So if we just do a var dump on user, you can see here that we get all of the information here about that user in the database. So what we're gonna do now is close off our PHP tag and I'm just gonna create a basic document layout. Give this a title. And inside of here, we're gonna have an H2 and we're gonna echo out the user's username. Now already, this is not preventing against an XSS attack. So what we're doing now is probably what you've done before, but is completely unsafe and insecure. So let's take a look at this page, preview it. You can see here we've got Alex and then the bio underneath if it does exist. And let's just get rid of this var dump as well. So what I'm gonna do now is demonstrate how a user or an attacker may be able to execute JavaScript within your site. So under the bio, obviously normally this would be about me, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm just pretending that I'm kind of updating my profile via a form. An attacker would pop some JavaScript in there, so we're just alerting out the number one. And now, because that's being output to the page, you can see that we're actually getting that alert. So what we're doing here is we're executing JavaScript on this profile page uh, when we're really not supposed to. And you might be thinking, well, how is this relevant? Why does it matter if a little bit of JavaScript is run on a page? It can be inconvenient, but how is this a security risk? Well, what we're now going to demonstrate is stealing a cookie, uh, logging it to an attacker's server. So. To start out with then, I'm actually gonna set a cookie just up here. And I'm gonna create a new 
date time objects. I need this to generate a timestamp. And I'm going to go and set a cookie. I'm just going to call this session. And I'm going to write ABC in here. But you'll imagine that this is some kind of secure token that either authenticates or re authenticates a user. And we just put the timestamp in there. And for the date time, I'll just say, well, I want to keep the user logged in for one week. So if you open your developer tools, head over to resources and cookies and localhost. If you are following along, you should now see this session in here with this value. This would only be visible to the user who's actually visiting your website. This would be a hashed value or a completely randomly generated value, a long value, um, if it was generated securely. So we have this value. We're going to assume that ABC is a value that if stolen by an attacker could be used to authenticate a user. So we don't want this to be shared by anyone. So how are we going to do this with an XSS attack via JavaScript? Well, it's actually pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of this now because we don't need to generate it again. And we now have that cookie persisting in there. So I'm going to pretend that in this folder, I'm going to call it attacker. This is an attacker's server. So just imagine that this is a completely different domain, completely different machine, and we're going to be uh, stealing the data from a user that visits this profile page. So say Dale comes along, visits Alex's page, we'll see this script, and what will then happen is um, we're going to steal Dale's cookie. So inside of attacker, I'm going to create a new file, and this is going to be the file that will steal a cookie. Remember, this is going to be on a completely different server. This will be on an attacker's server. So what we're going to do then is inside of here, we're going to say cookie. We're going to grab that from the query string. So cookie. We're going to say file put contents. We're going to put that into something called log.txt. And we're going to place that value in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to redirect back to the original site to make it look like nothing ever happened. So I'm going to say location, tutorials, security, index.php. You can really uh, log in, uh, an attacker could put a user anywhere, Google, whatever. So how are we actually going to do this then? Well, this is all written within JavaScript. Now, essentially, what we need to do is we need to use JavaScript to grab the current cookie value within this browser, or all of the cookie values. We then want to send it along to that cookie.php file, which is the attacker's script. And then we can log that to a file, which we've done. So all we need to do in here is say document.location. equals and this would be the domain of the attacker so remember I am an attacker placing this within my about me section and then forwarding anyone that sees this page that's vulnerable to XSS over to my site so this is in tutorials security attacker and cookie.php so let's just see how this works first of all so when I land now on this profile page, you can see that I'm actually taken over to that page. So the user that's vulnerable to this attack viewing my profile will be sent over to this page. So you can see we've got an error here at the moment because there are uh, there's nothing in here called cookie. What we eventually need to do is say cookie equals and then the value of the cookie. So how do we grab this? Let's go back to our index page and we will modify our bio again. So what we're going to do now then is we're going to say cookie equals and we're going to append onto this document dot cookie because if we within our browser say document dot cookie this will give us the actual uh, value of the cookie that no one else is supposed to see. So now what's going to happen then is we are going to go over to Alex's profile. We're now redirected to that page and redirected immediately back. And now if we look inside of our text editor, you can see here that on the attacker's computer, they have successfully 
captured that session. And what they could then do is go ahead and copy this and then they could essentially just authenticate as a user. So this is how we steal cookie data. So now that we know how to steal cookie data, we need to know how we can stop script tags from executing. So we now need to come up with a way that we can escape all of this data. And you might be thinking, well, why can't I just uh, basically remove these script tags as they go into my database table? And that's absolutely fine, but it's always good to actually escape everything to prevent XSS attacks because really trying to sanitize the data going in is a lot more difficult than escaping it coming out. So what we're going to do then is inside of our security folder, I'm just going to create a file called functions.php. And of course, you can put this anywhere in your application. It doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function either called escape or E, whichever you will remember better, whichever you find easier to use. Um, e is kind of like a general uh, function name for escaping, but of course you can call it whatever you want. And into this, we want to pass a value to escape. And we're going to return that value, but an escaped version. And we'll look at how we can properly do this in a moment. So over on index.php then, all I need to do now is wrap any data I want to output within this E function. And it's pretty clean because it's just called E. We already know what it is and it doesn't really look too much different to what we were doing before. So we obviously need to just temporarily pull this in. So I'm just going to require in functions.php. And at the moment, this isn't doing anything. So it's going to do exactly the same thing when we head over to this profile. Again, we're just logging uh, that log.txt file. So it's not making any effect just yet. So let's update this then. And we're going to use a function called HTML special chars or characters. Now, what this will do is it will convert any special characters. And these special characters are things like quotes. Uh, double and single quotes depending on the level that we set and anything that could potentially uh, be a problem. So there's a couple of additional options that we want to pass into this. Usually what people will do is just provide a value and that's not as good. So if we head back to our index page, when you do define your document markup, you can see that we're using character encoding UTF-8. Now, as long as we have that set on our page, what we want to do is also include that within this function. So before we do that, we are going to make sure we are escaping single and double quotes. There are tons of different options that you can use for this and tweak around depending on your needs, but end quotes is usually a safer option. So we're going to go for that. And then we're going to define the character encoding. So in this case, it's UTF-8 like so. So we are now protected against XSS because we're using this E function. We are converting uh, characters into their HTML entities. And we'll look at that, what, what that means exactly in just a moment. So now when I hit that page, you can actually see that rather than running this script, it's just showing it on the page. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with this at all. This will never be run. And if we view the page source of this page, you can see why. So ampersand LT and then a semicolon and ampersand GT and a semicolon is a less than a greater than HTML entity. And what that means is these uh, characters here or this entity here won't be interpreted by the browser as a less than or greater than sign. It will be interpreted as a literal character that we want to display. And that means that we're not actually running this script we're just showing the contents of it. So here we can see we now have no threat against XSS attack because we are actually escaping them values. And that is pretty much it. There are probably a few other things that you could read about this uh, HTML special chars function. There's also an HTML entities function, which is similar. But go ahead and look these up in the PHP manual. There's plenty of information about them, as well as the different uh, levels of escaping that you can do. But generally, just using this method, you should have enough protection against XSS attacks.